Welcome to Accounting with Madam Mombi. So today we are going to look at um, cost estimation methods. Specifically, we are going to look at the high-low method. That is a method that relies on the highest and the lowest activity levels and the associated cost to be able to estimate a cost function. So the high-low method it is also called the two-point method. And uh, obviously, the reason it is called the two-point method, it is because it relies on the two points, which we have said is the highest and the lowest activity levels. It is also called the range method for the same reason, because it is looking at the range, that is the difference in activity level between the highest and the lowest and the difference in the associated cost between the highest and the lowest activity levels. So um, this kind of method is used when we have a mixed cost. That is a cost that has both components of variable and fixed cost. So where the total cost of a utility um, has both components of fixed and variable, we call that a mixed cost. Now, having a mixed cost, our attempt using the high-low method is to break down that total cost into the fixed and variable components. So that is the first underlying factor for us to be able to estimate a cost using this method. The cost has to be a mixed cost. So. <clears throat> Then we are going to estimate a cost function of the form y is equals to a plus bx, where y represents the total fixed, I mean, sorry, y represents the total cost. That is the total cost with both components of fixed and variable is what is represented by y. It is a dependent variable in this uh, equation. We're also going to have A, which represents the total fixed cost. That is, uh, it is constant because we know that fixed cost is constant within the relevant range. So A is a constant. It is the total fixed cost, which is constant within the relevant range. So then you're going to have B. It is also a constant that represents the variable cost per unit. And again, the variable cost per unit is constant. So B represents variable cost per unit. X represents a cost driver. Now, a cost driver from the definition is uh, any activity that causes the incurrence of cost. So a cost driver here can be the number of units of output the more the number of units of output, the more the cost. Also, uh, X can also be machine hours. The more the machine hours, the more the total cost. It can also be labor hours. Again, the more the labor hours, the more the cost. So any activity that causes the incurrence of cost would be represented by X, which is the independent variable in this equation representing the cost driver. And all those several items can represent the cost drivers from output, labor hours, machine hours, etc. So, uh, so what are the steps in the high-low method? In the high-low method, we are going to first of all start by selecting the highest activity level. That is the highest if it is output, which is our cost driver, we are going to be looking at what is the highest output achieved. And we look at what is the associated cost with the highest activity level. We're also going to look at the lowest activity level. That is, if our cost driver is output, what was the least output during the period and the associated cost. So our first step is to determine the highest level of activity and the lowest level of activity with their associated costs. Then <clears throat> after we have that, we are going to look at a, a way of computing B. Remember we have said that B is the variable cost per unit. 
For us to get variable cost per unit, we need to get the change in Y, Y here being the cost, from the highest to the lowest point, we see what is the change in Y, <coughs> and we divide that with the change in X, that is the change in activity level from the highest activity to the lowest activity. Once you divide the two, the change in Y over the change in X, you're able to get B, which is variable cost per unit. Now, looking at our equation that we had here, again, if we were to make A the subject of the formula, A here being fixed cost, it would be, uh, A being the subject of the formula would mean that A is equals to Y minus BX. That is, A fixed cost is given by total cost minus the variable cost, the total variable cost. So when we come to our formula, we are going to look for A, which is the fixed cost. And I'm saying that the fixed cost can be given by total cost minus total variable cost. So we get the total cost minus the variable cost, and we are able to get the fixed cost, which is A, in our formula. Then from there, we can be able to formulate the equation. So we are going to look at an illustration whereby the following information is provided regarding the total maintenance cost and the hours of maintenance for the first six months of the year of ABC Limited. So we can look at the data that is given. The data is given as follows. We have the month of January where the hours of maintenance is 625 hours. And the total maintenance cost is 7,950. That is for January. February, you have there the hours of maintenance being 450 hours with an associated cost of 7,400, and so on and so forth up to June. That is the six months. So you can have a copy of the question, especially the data points that we have here because they are the ones we are going to use to formulate our cost equation. Now, by looking at the data, our focus, we should start by looking at the activity level, Ident identifying which here is Y and which one is X. From this information, maintain hours of maintenance is what causes the total maintenance cost to increase. Therefore, Hours of maintenance is X. It is the cost driver. And the total maintenance cost is Y. It is the total cost. So in our case now, looking at X, which is activity level here, our activity level is maintain hours of maintenance. We are going to look at the highest hours of maintenance and the lowest hours of maintenance. From our question, the highest hours were in June. The highest hours were in June, which is 850 hours, with an associated cost of 9,800. That is our highest point. The lowest point, that is um, the hours of maintenance were least. They were least in February, where we have 450 hours with an associated cost of 7,400. So these two points, February, which will be the lowest point, and our highest point is going to be June. So the two points that we are going to be using to estimate our cost equation is the highest, which is June, and the lowest, which is February. So you can have a copy of the question, then we're going to compute for the answer. So before we compute for the answer, as I was saying, this is a graph that shows a mixed cost. This is a graph that shows a mixed cost, where a mixed cost, if drawn on a graph, we were to graph that data on the cost here and the activity levels. On the activity level you would find that the 
This represents the fixed cost. And this represents the variable cost. So the point where this line of best fit meets the y-axis, and this is the x-axis, where this line meets the y-axis, this is the point where you get A. That is the point where you get A, A being the total fixed cost. Then the slope or the gradient of this line, the slope or the gradient of this line is where we are going to get B, which is, we have said it is change in Y over change in X. So the slope of that line, it is what is going to give us the variable cost per unit, which we are looking for. We are looking for the variable cost per unit, and we are looking for the total fixed cost to be able to derive a cost function using the high low method so we can clear this and then be, we are able to have a look at the question so from our question the highest point we have identified in the month of june that is where you're going to have the highest point the highest point had um, an activity level an activity level we can look at that The highest point, they had an activity level of 850 with an associated cost of 9,800. And the lowest point had an activity of 450 with an associated cost of 7,400. Uh, so those are the ones that we are going to use. So the highest point is going to be 850 with an associated cost of 9,800. And we are saying this is X, this is Y. X being the cost driver, Y being the cost, the total cost. Then the lowest point is the 450. And the associated cost is 7,400. So we say that in our first step is to estimate B, which is change in Y, over change in x, change in x. So our y is changing from 9,800 minus 7,400. That is a change in y. Then the change in x is given by 850 minus 450. So if you compute this, this is going to give us 2,400 and this is going to give us 400. So once you compute the change in uh, y over change in x, you're going to get 6. That is what you get once you do the, this on a calculator. And I'm saying this minus this is 2,400. And the 450 minus 850 minus 450 is 400. If you divide 2,400 by 400, you're going to get 6. So. Again, we said you are going to get A, which is given by Y minus B, X. So, we can use the highest point, or we can use the lowest point, whichever. Let's start with the highest point. At the highest point, Y is equal to 9,800. And we have realized from our calculation that B is equal to 6. Therefore, what is X at the highest point? X at the highest point is 850. So using the data of the highest point, having 9,800 as a total cost, X is 850, and having computed B to be 6, then we can compute and get that uh, A, which is a total fixed cost, is 4,700. You can use also the lowest point. At the lowest point, total cost is uh, 7,400. And you're going to less 6 multiplied by 450. And again, our answer is 
4,700. So the point to note here is that the only two points that you can use to estimate for the fixed cost is either the highest point or the lowest point, but both of them should give you the same answer. <coughs> so from our working, we have realized that A, which is fixed cost, total fixed cost is equal to 4,700. And we have also realized that B, our variable cost per unit is equal to six. Therefore, we can conclude that our answer or our solution is that our equation is Y is equal to A plus B X. And this is our answer. So having gotten that the cost estimation function using the high low method is y is equal to 4,700 plus 6x, we can be able to estimate future costs at any level of maintenance hours. So for example, if maintenance hours were 1,000 hours, we can be able to approximate the total cost at 1,000 maintenance hours which is going to be equals to 4,700 plus six. We are going to replace X with 1,000. So replacing X with 1,000, we are going to get that the total cost at 1,000 hours of maintenance is equals to 10,700. And that is how you can use that cost equation to estimate future costs. So if you have liked this video, you found it to be useful, share, subscribe. Thank you.